Okay, in, in this video I'm going to depart from my usual discussion of nutrition or exercise science and I'm going to talk about uh, a book that I just finished reading. Uh, I don't usually do book reviews and I don't I certainly don't do video book reviews uh, and I certainly don't you know try and push other people's books but this book was complete this particular book was uh, I found very interesting uh, about a certain individual that is extremely popular uh, almost 50 years after his death he's uh, and I'm talking about Bruce Lee uh, and uh, the thing I wanted to re that I really want to focus on, is the uh, precise cause of Bruce Lee's death. I mean, there's a lot of speculation, but first let me show you the book. This is, uh, this is the book. It's called Bruce Lee, A Life by Matthew Poli. Uh, and the book is, it's a huge book. It's very thick, as you can see. And, uh, you know, <laughs> I, a lot of the people that view these videos have like 30-second attention spans, and this book is going to be completely overwhelming for them because it's extremely detailed. The author worked on it for seven years. He interviewed hundreds of people. He interviewed just about every person alive who knew uh, Bruce Lee, including Bruce Lee's widow. Uh, her name is Linda Lee. Uh, I can't remember the last name. Caldwell. Linda Lee Caldwell. Uh, she gave him a lot of information. I, I, I interviewed uh, uh, Bruce Lee's uh, daughter. Her name is Shannon, uh, and uh, it just he, he he blows away a lot of myths about Bruce Lee. Uh, I I don't know. I guess I could say I'm a fan of Bruce Lee. I, I don't consider myself a fan of anybody really, but I guess you can say I am the closest I could be a, a, of a fan to Bruce Lee because. I've enjoyed all of his movies. I mean, this guy was a force of nature. I mean, I, I've seen the fighting scenes over and over. I never get tired of it. I mean, the, the, the athletic ability and the way this guy was able to punch and kick and just the speed is just mind-boggling. I, I worked with professional boxers in the 90s. I worked with 14 world champions, and I don't think any of them came close to having the hand and foot speed of uh, Bruce Lee. One of the things that you have to know about Bruce Lee, those who know uh, Bruce Lee's background already know this, is that Bruce Lee started as a, as a dancer. He actually won a cha-cha championship in uh, Hong Kong in 1957. I know it's hard to imagine the, the, this fighting Bruce Lee as a cha-cha dancer, but you know his, his footwork was a key to his fighting ability. He was very fast on his feet. Another rev re revelation of the book uh, that I found interesting was that uh, Bruce Lee, and I already knew this, Bruce Lee was one of the first athletic advocates of weight training. Bruce Lee engaged heavily in weight training at a time when weights were thought to make you muscle-bound and slow. Uh, Bruce Lee was very, very analytical, and he looked at the, the way that fast twitch muscles worked, and he realized that, if anything, uh, lifting weights would, get, would increase his muscular power and his muscular strength and likely also prevent injuries. So he was a vanguard in that sense uh, because Bruce lifted weights. He, he didn't lift heavy weights. He preferred lighter weights. And his lifting was sports specific in the, in the sense that he, he used weights. Uh, he, he developed exercise or used exercises that would increase his ma martial arts skills rather than he wasn't interested in developing large muscles. He did a lot of forearm work. He did a lot of back work. He did some leg work. He did a lot of uh, uh, bicep work and arm work, uh, chins, that kind of stuff. He did a tremendous amount of abdominal work also. He was always doing abdominal work. Uh, and, uh, you know, what happened was one day he was doing an exercise called the good morning exercise where you t put the barbell on your shoulders like you're going to do a squat and you just bend forward uh, to a parallel. It's, it supposedly works the hamstrings and the lower back. I don't know what happened, whether he was warmed up or cold or whatever, but he injured his back severely uh, to the point where he caused neurological damage. Uh, and and uh, people don't realize this, that all those fighting scenes that you see Bruce Lee moving around like that, he had a lower back injury that was pretty severe, and he took pain reduction medication. But it, obviously it didn't affect his fighting skills. There's a couple of other interesting things about Bruce Lee. Uh, for example, <laughs> his great-grandfather was Jewish. He was a Dutchman, a Dutch man who married a, uh, a, a Chinese woman, and he was Jewish. Uh, this is not going to be a pleasing uh, revelation to all the Nazis 
who uh, who are online who watch this stuff, uh, they're going to be a little pissed off because they might even have posters of uh, Bruce Lee on their walls. It's going to kind of piss them off to learn that Bruce Lee had a little bit of Jewish in, in him. <laughs> but that's the truth. Uh, you know, there's a lot of other revelation, a lot of great interviews. Uh, uh, Bruce Lee was extremely dedicated. He, he'd work out for hours a day. He was also extremely hyper. Uh, a nickname of uh, his was uh, Can't Sit Still Lee, they called him, because he was always moving, super hyperactive, always moving. And this, by the way, probably played a role in his death. Now, when we get to the point about the uh, death stuff, uh, Bruce Lee, uh, he, uh, he wrote out, he was very goal-oriented, uh, you know, very, very much into philosophy. His library contained 2,500 books. And uh, he wrote out a, uh, a kind of goal sheet where he said he was going to be the, uh, the, the first Asian breakthrough movie star and he was going to make millions of dollars. Uh, one of those uh, goals was met. He was the first Asian breakthrough movie star. And in my mind, and I think a lot of people agree with me, if he had survived, if he had lived, he probably would have made more money than any movie star in history because he was so popular. I mean, he was his screen charisma was just unmatchable as proof of that. Look at all the guys they've tried to uh, use as, as substitutes for Bruce Lee over the years. Look at all these pseudo Bruce Lees they've come up with. Nobody has ever come close to matching Bruce Lee's screen charisma. They've never found another guy like him. Probably the closest person to him, uh, but he also didn't have a chance, was his son Brandon who was very sadly killed in an accident uh, on a movie set. Uh, he was uh, shot, uh, uh, which, again, the uh, conspiracy theorists say that Bruce uh, Lee's son was also killed as part of a conspiracy. But in truth, Brandon Lee, what happened was it had to do with a, uh, a gun that was, uh, they, they, they couldn't get find any blanks. So what they did is they used live ammuni ammunition, but they removed the, uh, the powder which was supposedly would make the uh, you know the uh, bullets blanks. Unfortunately, the uh, the guy who did this did a shoddy job. One of the bullets he didn't completely empty the powder over it and was in the chamber. So when the actor aimed the gun at uh, uh, in one of the scenes at, at uh, Brandon Lee, uh, it turned out to be a live uh, shot. Unfortunately, and it killed Brandon Lee at 27 years of age. Brandon Lee was a very handsome guy, very very articulate, very smart also had the screen charisma. I think he would have been a big star, which is a complete tragedy that this young man died like that. But I don't think it was any kind of conspiracy. And, and related to Bruce Lee, uh, I mean, you know, you look at Bruce Lee, the epitome of fitness. Uh, he was, what, 32 years old at the time he died. Not an ounce of fat on the guy. But here's a lot of things people don't know about Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee was a, generally a healthy guy. He took a lot of food supplements he subscribed, by the way, to every bodybuilding magazine of the day, Iron Man, Muscle Builder, all the bodybuilding magazines. Bruce Lee was an ardent reader of bodybuilding magazines. He was really into weight training. But what people don't realize is uh, in 1972, the year that Bruce Lee died, on May 10th, he, he suffered a, uh, ser uh, some, a series of what looked like convulsions, and, it and he had a very elevated temperature. Uh, he came close to death. Uh, and it turned out that uh, he was suffering from heat stroke. Uh, it was very hot where he was in Hong Kong, and uh, he was overworked. He was working uh, to get this new, new movie out. I can't remember which movie it was. It might have been, uh, I'm not sure, one of his final movies. I can't remember which one. But he uh, was working something like 20 hours a day, getting very little sleep. He had lost 15% of his body weight. He wasn't drinking enough fluids. And because of his hyperactivity, he probably again, raised his body temperature to an extent where he went into convulsions on May 10th, 1972. Um, he did survive, however. He went and had a checkup by neurologists. They told him he had the body of an 18-year-old. And he, his body fat was so low, they could hardly measure it. So he, he figured he was in good shape. He went right back to his usual routine. Uh, and what happened was um, he was uh, at, at the uh, apartment of a woman named Betty Ping, uh, who was a, uh, a Chinese actress. Uh, he was having an affair with her, unfortunately, uh, for his wife. Uh, and uh, he cl complained of having a headache. He wasn't feeling good. Uh, he took a pill called Equagesic, which is a combination of aspirin and mepopromate. Mepromate, I, I probably mispronouncing it, I don't know. But anyway, it was a combination of two drugs. 
An important point is he had taken aspirin in the past, because one of the theories is that he had a sensitivity to aspirin, which might have caused his death. Not true. He had taken aspirin in the past, that he had been seen taking aspirin. This particular drug that he took does not cause cerebral edema, which was the immediate cause of Bruce, Bruce Lee's death. So the notion that he died for, uh, or had an allergic reaction to taking this drug called equagesic is probably not true. So then what did kill Bruce Lee? What killed Bruce Lee was the same thing that caused his earlier uh, series of convulsions or, or you know the problem he had on May 10th 1972 which was the uh, which was the uh, heat he, he had excessive body heat in short Bruce Lee had heat stroke he, when you get heat stroke your body temperature rises to over 104 degrees and as that happens eventually if it's not treated you you get a, a swelling of the brain or cerebral edema when the when the brain swells to a certain point, it actually uh, basically blocks the part of the uh, brain that controls your heart, uh, your heart rhythm or your heartbeat. So eventually you, your heart stops beating and you die. What happened was Bruce Lee took uh, a tablet of this egregesic. He said he wanted to take a nap. He went in the uh, bedroom. Uh, about two hours later, this Betty walked in and she tried to wake him up. She couldn't wake him up. He had died. Uh, and uh, the uh, author of, <clears throat> sorry, the author of this book, Bruce Lee, presents excellent evidence. He, he has a whole chapter on the inquest, inquest into Bruce Lee's death. Uh, I think he presents solid, absolute evidence that, uh, that Bruce Lee did not die. He was not assassinated. He went, his, uh, his autopsy included complete toxicology tests. They didn't find any poisons in him, nothing. No arsenic, no nothing. This ninja stuff about him being killed by a ninja, there was no ninjas walking around at the time. It was complete, absolute nonsense. Um, what they found was uh, they found that the equagesic tablet, you know, in the toxicology study, and they found that he had eaten some hash, you know, hash, a form of marijuana, a little bit more powerful than regular marijuana. Uh, but marijuana does not kill you, and it does not cause uh, cerebral edema. It does not cause that. So you can rule out hash, too. Uh, so what it boils down to is uh, Bruce Lee was an extremely fit guy who just ran into uh, some bad circumstances. Uh, you know, he, he uh, was just very stressed out because of this uh, amount of work. He was, he was a workaholic. He was putting a lot of work into this movie. He wasn't uh, drinking enough fluids. Uh, he, uh, it was a very hot day. And uh, he, again, he wasn't getting enough sleep. His immune system was down. It was basically a, uh, what do they call that again, uh, a chain of events that just happened to lead to uh, unfortunate circumstances which caused his death. Uh, and uh, I, I do believe that Lee, uh, Bruce Lee died of a heat stroke. Uh, if he had not gotten this uh, heat stroke, con considering his conditioning and, and the, the way he ate and the way he exercised, I believe that Bruce Lee would still be alive today. Uh, he would be uh, he, he'd be 78 years old. I, I think he'd be in great shape. I, I for all I know, he'd still be making movies. This guy would have been the biggest movie star ever. There's no question about it. Uh, his his movie, the last movie, uh, has already has made 350 million dollars, and it cost a fraction of that to make. Bruce Lee was an icon and deservedly so. Yeah, he cheated on his wife. He was a human being. He also had one testicle, and but yet he had two kids. So that obviously that didn't stop him. Uh, I, I freely admit to admiring Bruce Lee for his uh, his athletic accomplishments, his dedication to training, and his intellect. I think he was a very intelligent guy, also. So uh, again, uh, the reason why Bruce Lee died. I know there are people who disagree with me. Uh, these ardent fans of Bruce Lee, these diehard fans around the world just refuse to uh, think that a super, a seemingly superhuman person like Bruce Lee can die of something as simple as a heat stroke. They have to come up with these, uh, these kind of like elaborate causes of death, ninja, uh, uh, you know, the touch of death or ninja attack or, or uh, poisoning or, or the old guard uh, karate guys hated Bruce Lee and they didn't, want to, they didn't want him to be successful. So they had Betty Ping kill him. I mean, this is all laughable garbage. 
The man died of heat stroke. And the really pathetic part about it, the really sad part, is if they would have, uh, if, if, if he would have been with somebody who had some semblance of any medical knowledge at all, they would have, as soon as Bruce Lee started showing symptoms, they should have immediately put him in a tub full of, uh, of ice water or at least thrown some cold water on the guy, had him drink cold water. Those simple deeds would have saved Bruce Lee's life. If they had just brought his body temperature down, he would have lived. The cerebral edema would have receded. The man would have lived. So that's it. That's my theory. Not my theory. It's, it's the theory of Matthew Polly. Uh, and he bases it on solid information, all the information presented at the inquest. I mean, the truth is, I'll be blunt, we'll, re we'll really never know for sure what killed Bruce Lee, but I think definitely from, from the viewpoint of science and proof, I think the, uh, the evidence does point to heat stroke. So that's it. And, uh, you know, I'm going to continue to look at Bruce Lee's... Uh, his movies, his work, I, I never get bored of seeing them. They're just terrific, terrific stuff. If you want the, uh, the best information on nutrition, by the way, if Bruce Lee was alive, I think he'd subscribe to my Applied Metabolics newsletter. <laughs> I know it sounds funny for me to say that, but I think Bruce Lee was really into science and, and, and evidence-based proof, and that's what I have in my Applied Metabolics newsletter. Every month I cover nutrition, supplements, exercise science, uh, anti-aging research, which if Bruce, Bruce Lee, if he was alive at 78, he would be interested in anti-aging research too. I also cover uh, ergogenic AIDS, uh, all different uh, topics, women's health, hormonal therapy, 40 to 50 pages every month. It's like getting a monthly e-book, no advertisements, no bull, just solid evidence. And I'm covering topics that people are interested in. That they're, they're practical. You'll be able to use it from day one. I don't write about rat or mice studies or lab animals because what affects a lab animal mo mo might not affect a human being. I write human information that can be used by anybody today instantly. It will improve your life. It will improve your training. It will improve your goals for bodybuilding, fitness, or whatever. That's www.appliedmetabolics.com. If you subscribe, I will enroll you or offer you an invitation to my uh, online face, private Facebook page, page for Applied Metabolics, where each day I, I add new information about nutrition, exercise science, and medicine every day. On the, and I also answer questions in, on the private Facebook page. I also have an email portal on my Applied Metabolics site where, uh, where I will answer questions exclusively from, e uh, from subscribers to Applied Metabolics only, not, not unsolicited questions. You have to be a subscriber. Again, www.appliedmetabolics.com. And Bruce Lee did have dogs. He did love animals. And why don't you emulate him and go to your local shelter and adopt a dog. They're the best friends you'll ever have. Uh, and I think Bruce Lee, if he were alive, would confirm that too. Take care.